Hello everyone, this is Sue Johnson and I will be your System Mind Network Coordinator for today's event. Once again, I'd like to welcome you to the 2006 RPG and Beyond Web uh, Conference sponsored by DCD and Databoro. Right now we are pleased to have Aaron Bartel with us to present this next session. Um, SOAP, WSDL, HTTP, XML, XSD, DTD, UDI, uh, what the? Aaron is an RPG and Java developer for Kringle Technologies Incorporated. Most recently, he's been sharing his ideas and experience, experiences with others in the mid-range uh, industry through articles, blogging, and user groups. His current um, enjoyment in life is being a lead developer for a recently announced product, uh, RPG XML Suite, uh, which can be found at www.rpg-xml.com. And today, Aaron will show you how all these technologies work together from an RPG programmer's perspective. Uh, you will quickly realize that there is no magic going on, but instead the same practices of programming that have been going on for decades. Uh, it just has a new face now. After we've wrapped up today's, today's presentation, we will save some time for questions, which you can ask at any time by using the Q&A tab located on the bottom right column of your screen, and submit to host, presenter, and um, panelists. And please note that you can use the chat tab to communicate with me, and the Q&A tab to communicate with the panelists. Um, if you're having difficulties viewing or hearing today's presentation, we are recording this event, which you'll have access to for 24-7 playback review. Look for details uh, and recording information in a follow-up email. Okay, Erin, I'm passing the ball to you, and you can um, get started. All right. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Good deal. Well, I, uh, I'm testing different things. I'm, uh, I really would like to have an icebreaker, and I'd love that icebreaker to be where everybody would go around the room and say their flav uh, favorite flavor of goat's milk and consistency, but uh, I don't think that will work today. So we'll just go ahead and hop right into the presentation. So I'm Aaron Martell, and we're going to be talking about SOAP, WSDL, HTTP, XML, XSD, DTD, UTD, what the, exactly. Uh, it's just a, a mess of technologies that we've been presented with in the past few years that um, have a lot of uh, question marks around them, I guess. Uh, when I first started doing web services about four or five years ago, it was like pulling teeth trying to understand exactly what was going on because there was so much genericness in the industry regarding web services. So hopefully what I'm trying to do today is just relate these technologies to us, uh, the RPG programmers of the world, so we can understand them better. So without further ado, here's our deck. Uh, go through why are we at this point in technology, uh, just kind of describe how we got here, why we're here, um, what should we do from here. Uh, talk about XML, XSD, WSDL, SOAP, HTTP, UDDI, and then kind of give a description as far as where you can uh, start the whole process. What do you need to get your uh, feet off the ground or get your feet wet? With that, um, let's jump right into why are we here. We're here because we need to connect disparate systems. Uh, through time, our IT departments have uh, gone the way of developing something on the iSeries, and then we'll get another uh, vendor's product in the mix, and it won't run on the iSeries. We'll have to you know, start up a, a Windows machine or a Linux machine and install that vendor's product on there. And Inevitably, we, we need to get data off of that machine, or we need to interface with the iSeries to get business logic off of it or whatnot. Really what web services are trying to do is bridge that gap so that we no longer have to operate in, in silos and not talk, have our applications talk to one another. Instead we can integrate them seamlessly and move forward in that fashion so that our business can be much smoother moving. As far as uh, history of this, I mean it, it goes all the way back to the 70s and I, I found this um, as I was doing just a little bit of uh, history research. Uh, this goes all the way back to 1979, and it's an RFC called a High Level Framework for Network Based Resource Sharing. So it just gives you an example that people have been trying to do this for a very long time. That's no news to anybody here on the phone, but uh, just to give an example of how long it's been uh, being attempted. Um, and then it, we go through the, the other technologies like Microsoft's DCOM and uh, Java's Cobra. Now, these were all good and fairly well done approaches. But their problem was is they were very vendor, i.e., Microsoft and IBM specific, and it didn't allow, allow for um, 
the opposite side of the fence. So if Microsoft developed it, well, it didn't necessarily mean that IBM could work well with it. It didn't allow the other side of the fence to operate well with it. So the object that this latest round of quote unquote invent inventors is to uh, bring it down to a, as basic of a level as they possibly can. What could be more basic than uh, passing text across the wire? So in the end, XML is text, and it's going across the wire, and that is the solution that web services is all about. Um, now, when I say it's just text, it's obviously there's a little bit more complication to it than that, but um, going off of this last point here, essentially what web services are trying to accomplish is the same thing that we're um, doing on our I series today. So you've got RPG program one trying to communicate to RPG program number two. And they're passing back uh, and forth parameters, and they know where each other exists ahead of time. It's not like we're auto discovering things, but they they communicate with each other because they need to share a resource and they need to share some business logic or pass pass data back and forth. Um, so that's really why we're at this point in technology. And um, I'm going to now describe all those different pieces of technology that are involved. First, XML. Um, XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. It's simply in the one sentence definition, a technology that holds data or a specification that allows you to hold data. To relate it to RPG, you could consider XML a data structure. And in a data structure, we've got different named elements along with data types and how long each data type is. And essentially what a data structure is doing is it's delimiting all the different pieces of data that we're trying to hold in this structure. So it's defining that the first byte of this data structure is called the residential byte, and it's a Boolean character, single character long. The next one's a title, et cetera, et cetera. And if we actually look at that in memory, here would be the layout of that. Excuse me. Um, and each piece of data, based on how we have this defined here, is padded by each uh, respective piece of uh, each each uh, set of blanks following it all the way out to the last piece where we've got the phone dimensioned out as uh, two 12 bytes long. So that's, that's how we hold data in RPG, no surprise there. Now, if we go over to XML and take a look at how the same thing would apply, uh, we can see that, um, actually first let me describe uh, what this XML is. Within XML there's two mechanisms to hold data. You've got elements and you've got attributes. Right here, Oh, my mouse come up. Right here we've got an element. An element starts with a beginning tag, much like this right here, or this, or this, and an ending tag. And within there you can store data. In the same respect, you can store data in an attribute. An attribute is always within an element. You've got an attribute name and an attribute value. Um, so to relate the data structure that we were looking at before to an XML document, you can obviously see that these two have uh, like named fields. And really the only difference between the two is that we're um, marking up the data right along with the data in an element, uh, the XML example. On this side, we're not really uh, doing that. It's actually just this is a compile time piece of uh, structure. And then this is actually going to be there at real time also. And what I mean by that is when we're storing XML in memory or in an IFS file, uh, the the definition or the delimiter of the data is actually stored right along with the data. So in comparison with uh, strictly data structures when we were looking at in memory, we didn't have um, something saying that this was the first name. We just knew that based upon its position in the structure. So now we, we uh, have extended upon that so that when this data goes someplace, it's almost as if it's self-describing or it's delimited by its tags. Um, now that we've got that defined, uh, just how they how that could relate to an RPG data structure, uh, one of the main features or benefits of XML is its ability to be extended upon, or its uh, rather its flexibility to be extended upon. And what I mean by that is, let's say we wanted to separate out the first and last name of somebody into two separate fields. Uh, you could also do that in a, a data structure just by adding two additional fields, but it wouldn't it would all be still position related, whereas if I wanted to extend XML here, uh, I create new tags, and um, now I've got a new spot that's specifically for, for example, the first name, 
for example, the last name. 